Rocky was novel in a couple of ways. Um, first of all, I saw it recently in Academy screening. To see it on screen was fabulous, and it's really, really good. And the thing that was striking was the script is astonishingly good. The script is why Stallone ended up in it. He had no, no force on earth could have persuaded anybody to put Sly in that movie, except that he owned the words. He had the power, and the words were good. And then the nature of that story, which is a story of luck, and of course it's plenty clear to me at this point that, that there's some parallels with my own story. That lightning bolt hit me too. I never did think of myself as an inventor. I thought of myself, first of all, as a folk singer. In the era when kids were folk singers, if you put on a blazer and you did Negro spirituals and you lined up and played your instruments badly, you were a folk singer. And then I thought of myself as a, as a movie maker because my folk career didn't end very well. And so I decided to put a studio together. We did all the inaugural, really fun little films for the Sesame Street program. But for me to make a moving camera shot, which I always loved, we had to pick this dolly up and get it in a pickup truck and lay our rusty rails and put my pinheaded little Bolexes and tiny cameras on this vast dolly in order to move the lens 10 feet. I began to think that there has to be some way to isolate a camera which wants to move smoothly and a human being which is always in motion. There has to be some way to disconnect the camera from the human but let the human carry the thing because I loved handheld but I hated this. I mean the trouble with the handheld look for me is that that f frame, the edge of the frame is a window. That's my window into this world. It's not our world, it's next to us, it's contiguous, you know. I don't like my window frame moving. I want to be able to see through it like we see by eye. And so I started to chase how to separate person and camera. And I came out with the machine that you will see in this bit of film that I still have, and there it is. There I am running around in a field, exhilarated as hell because it actually works. And so just before I left for Los Angeles, just before I went to finally show it to the companies that were gonna do it, my then girlfriend, now wife Ellen and I, I went looking for shots that were impossible in Philadelphia because the shots wouldn't give away how you did it. That's the great thing about this gadget. Anybody who knew anything would look at the film and go, oh my God, what is that? It had a fiber optic viewfinder so that one eye is looking through this six foot pipe into the lens and the other eye is looking to see where you're running. So stairs were not a really good idea, particularly stairs that start and stop like the art museum steps. But we were there, you know, we parked up the top. We got a slate. I said, Ellen, let, let's, let's run down here. You run down, I'll follow you down. Uh, and then, we'll, then we're done and I can go to LA. By God, she, she ran down those steps like a gazelle. And I, I had a burst of adrenaline. I followed her all the way down and it was good. It was really good. It was better than the the other stuff with the older rig. Even though it was lighter, it was more stable, which was amazing to me. And I didn't fall down, which was great. <laughs> and then she ran back up. And I ran all the way back up after I kind of ran out of steam about the last landing. There are a lot of steps in the art museum. I mean, then that was just the art museum. Now it's an icon. Thousands of people run up and down that place. And it's become a symbol of something, personal achievement, or having accomplished something, or even just the dream of doing so. But just then, it was just us. And Ellen started to run, and I put the rig on, and I started to run down behind her. Well, I mean, here you go. I mean, this is what's happening now. People are coming from all over the world, you know? <laughs> it's great. Tour buses full of wrestling fans pull up down here, and they all run up these steps. Look at this. Look, look. This is fabulous. Isn't that amazing? This has become a big deal, you know? Uh, but back then, we just did it. And Ellen went all the way to the bottom, and then she came back up, and I came back up behind her. I do specifically remember there was grass in between the steps. I mean, the steps were just the steps. They weren't an icon. Now, Rocky and Philly and the Art Museum are all part of the American experience. You see people come from Australia in tour buses, and wrestling fans from Melbourne come charging up the steps, and then they all take movies of each other, and then they gather around and look at the movies. It's unbelievable.
There are 72 steps here. And I went off to Los Angeles, sold that rig in one day flat to the first company that we showed it to. Within months, the man who was about to direct Rocky, John Abelson, saw that demo and he said, oh my God, you know, how did you do that? And where are those steps? And that's why that shot is in Rocky. And that's, it's a killer because within a few months after that, I was chasing Stallone up those steps because that film came on like that afterward, a little B picture in Philly. As they say, the rest is history. So suddenly I'm shooting Rocky in Philadelphia. Rocky was a B picture that would have been looked down upon in any film capital. It was a tiny production. And we had shot moving shots all over Philly, chasing him through the, the uh, railroad yards and under the arcades near the Independence Hall and up Broad Street at the very first light. And the combination, uh, the city never really seen in Hollywood, the you know gritty eastern city, those long streets with the, the row houses, the, L, uh, elevated train going by, which of course we'd wait for and have a guy a block away queuing us when the train went so that that very evocative thing could happen in the background. Uh, Sly's brother, you know, singing around a lighted barrel of trash, which is a very Philly thing. And finally, the most amazing, wonderful shot, which is probably the first vehicle shot ever made like this. We drove up the middle of the Italian market. And I sat in the back of a van with the doors tied open on an apple box with this camera because it's a vile road. The van is bounding around up and down. And here's Stallone running, you know, now running like a god up the street, you know, uh, looking very self-confident, I must say. And uh, he got the attention of people on either side, the vendors for all these fruits and vegetables, because that's what happens at this market. You know, we ran through cascades of, you know, the, f the stuff that was pouring out of the old bins, old fruit and the stuff that didn't sell and so on. And guys would throw him an apple spontaneously that wasn't planned for. And the shot that followed it was down on the docks where this uh, ship from the grain trade, the Moshe Lu, had just been tied up. We swung around and shot out the side door of the van and we drove along parallel in the Moshe Lu, and Sly ran. He could run really, really fast. We're looking at that ship entering the frame, and Stallone is running fast, and we're, you know, we're driving along, and he puts on a burst of speed, for real, no special effect. He goes faster and faster, and the shot, again, has that sort of godlike serenity with this ship entering, and him is speeding up, and the very next cut is he's headed up the steps of the art museum. I mean, you couldn't fail to knock an audience flat with that, and boy, did it ever. Rocky is, of course, important to Philly. We kind of feel like, at times, I suppose, like an underdog because we're 90 miles from New York. My, I was, as a filmmaker, overshadowed somewhat by New York filmmakers. But I think that there's something more than that. I think that there was something startlingly realistic and unpretentious about that movie. There was something so heartfelt in it and so without guile. 